kids, Miss Kulkani here. So, penicillin. We are going to talk about penicillin in this video. And I am sure you know penicillin is one of the antibiotic which is known for a long time ago. Do you know how was penicillin discovered? It was Alexander Fleming and it was accidentally discovered. He was doing some research and he was growing some tissue culture and he left for a vacation and he came back and he found mold growing on his bacterial tissue culture. And as a result, what happened was it actually inhibited the growth of bacteria. So that made him think that the mold has some properties which can potentially kill the bacteria. And that's the reason scientists pursued and decided to isolate the chemical that was called as penicillin, which was a very potent antibiotic. So let's look at the structure of penicillin. In the structure, the important things to keep in mind is there is a four-member ring containing that nitrogen and of course carbonyl group. That bond which we have is called as an amide bond. And the ring is called as beta lactam ring. And it is known that this beta lactam ring is responsible for the antibiotic action. Also, focus on this R group. This R group can be any substituent. There are variety of antibiotics developed where the R group is changed. And that makes a big family of penicillin group antibiotics. I would like you to look at these analogs of penicillin and look over here penicillin G has a benzyl group as an R group and over here we got extra amino group attached to that benzyl. So it is CHNH2 and of course then over here the benzyl group is as it is. So that's called ampicillin. Each of this R group variation gives some different properties for antibiotic family. Now, how does this penicillin actually work? What's the mechanism of action? So, as I mentioned, the four-member beta-lactam ring, that is the one which is responsible for all antibiotic properties of penicillin. What happens when penicillin gets into the bacteria? It binds to the enzyme in bacteria. The enzyme is called as transpeptidase and this is the one which is responsible for the cross-linking of bacterial cell wall. What happens next? The bacterial cell wall becomes weak and then it starts allowing water to enter. It's all because of even the osmotic pressure. Finally, it results into the bacterial cell death and that's the way it can prevent the growth of bacteria. So isn't it a fascinating story? how it resists the bacterial growth. Now, I am sure you have heard about antibiotic resistance. Penicillin especially was becoming more and more commonly used antibiotic and it was used extremely routinely. So, certain bacteria decided to mutate. And how did that happen? Because of the higher production of penicillinase, the bacteria were able to mutate. Now, this problem of antibiotic resistance became so serious that it challenged the scientists. And then they decided to make different modified drugs, which were kind of analogs of penicillin. But they had modified side chain and even the branching was slightly different. Now, here is a quick snapshot for development of new antibiotics. That is the R group on the side chain of penicillin and which is also shown here in the structure. And look at this, the R group, it changed with different substituents and we end up getting all this penicillin G, penicillin V and so on. So this drug discovery of penicillin and also the development of new analogs made it possible to have a multitude of antibiotics which can be used for bacterial infection. So I guess you got some good information about penicillin and the analogs. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you again in next video. Until then, bye-bye.